I wasn't a sh- I wasn't a Everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with part three out of four for my November TBR for 2020. I read a total of 20 books this month. So like I said, it will be split into four different parts. The other three are going to be linked down below if you want to check those out. But without further ado, let us get started. The first book I'm going to be talking about for this part of the wrap up is Love From A to Z by SK Alley. I gave this book three out of five stars. It follows a girl named Zainab who after being suspended for standing up to her Islamophobic teacher, she goes to visit her aunt in Qatar a little bit early. On the plane, she meets a boy named Adam who she actually reconnects with once she lands in Qatar. He is hiding his diagnosis of multiple sclerosis from his father and sister after the death of his mother from the same thing. As the two grow closer as time goes on, their emotions and secrets become too much and they end up writing in these two journals in order to express themselves and it's like the story of their journey. I did enjoy the book for the most part but I didn't find it to be extremely memorable which is why I gave it an average rating of the three stars. I did really like how it had a big focus on Islam as a religion because I don't know that much about it. It was interesting to have have tidbits of information thrown into this book. From the reviews that I have read, the Muslim rep in this is very well done. I really like how the author put in very important topics about things like racism, cultural appropriation, grief, in a way that wasn't thrown in your face. I also really liked the family dynamics in this. Adam and his younger sister Hannah were so cute to read about. I also really liked Adam's relationship with his father. It was really nice to see a supportive parent for once in YA. I did like reading from both Zainab and Adam's point of view. I think that it was interesting to see the same event from both characters' perspectives. I liked the characters separate from one another as individuals and I think that they were well developed but unfortunately I was not the biggest fan of the romance in this which was a huge part of the story which is why again I only gave it a three out of five stars. So overall I think that the book was very easy to read. I finished it in like one sitting so it flew by very quickly but like I said I don't think it was overly memorable to me so three out of five stars. The next book I have is Kids of Appetite by David Arnold. I gave this this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Vic Benchuni and his friend Mads who are in the Hackensack Police Department trying to explain the story of Mads' uncle's murder and it's like the story of that. I was initially very excited for this book because I absolutely adored Mosquito Land by the same author but unfortunately this book fell a little bit short for me. I did like the found family aspect in this and the adventures that Vic and his friends went on in trying to spread his father's ashes. The story is told from dual point of view between Vic and Mads who are cool enough but I never truly felt connected to either of the characters. I think that Vic was a very interesting character. He had a neurological disorder called Mobius syndrome which caused half of his face to be paralyzed which was very interesting to read about and the way that people interacted with him. Coco was my favorite character out of the friend group. I think that she was so sassy and funny and honestly I just kind of wish that she had more of an inclusion in the story than being on this side. I think that her character along with Baz and Zeus were very interesting but they were never really brought into the story and we never really got a full view of them as people. They were just kind of side characters the entire time, which was kind of unfortunate. The mystery behind Mad's uncle's death was very interesting and fun to try to figure out. I wasn't able to figure it out in the end, so that was very enjoyable. Overall, it was a very quick read. I flew through it, but it's not something that I found super memorable, like I said, so three out of five stars. The next book was one of my favorites of this month. A lot of people did not like this book, but apparently I am not one of those people. So it is Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahern. This is the second book in the Serpent and Dove series, which a lot of people did not like that book either, but I loved it and I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. 
This book takes place immediately after the first book is done and I absolutely adored seeing the characters that I fell in love with in the first book again. I will say that you definitely need to read Serpent and Dove again before you read this book because there is absolutely no recap so I was a little bit lost at the beginning. I loved meeting new characters in this book. I loved the traveling troupe and Claude. I think that they were so much fun and a great addition to the story. I personally love Love the banter between characters in these books. I think they are all so funny and I just love reading about their relationships with one another. Lou is still one of my absolute favorite characters in YA. I know a lot of people have a lot of problems with her but something about her just makes my little heart flutter. I loved her slow descent into darkness in this and her trying to deal with that. I will say that at times she was a little bit annoying the way that she was trying to push Reed because he was dealing with a lot and the, the inner struggles that he was facing are totally understandable and she needed to back off a little bit. I didn't like Reed as much as I did in the first book, but like I said, it is understandable that he's dealing with a lot when he is told one thing for his entire life and then everything gets flipped upside down. It's probably gonna be a little traumatic. I love learning more about Coco, Ansel, and Bo in this. Coco was such an interesting character to me in the first book, so the addition of the Blood Witches and getting to know more about them was so great. Ansel is still a sweet little cinnamon roll and I loved how everybody tried so hard to protect him at all costs. Bo really grew on me in this addition to the story. I think that he was just so mistreated and misunderstood and I hate his father with a passion. I just wanted to hug him and tell him everything was going to be okay. I was not a big fan of Lou and Reed's relationship in this. They definitely need couples therapy and need to seek help for what's going on between them because it is not healthy. The book is pretty long. Long, like it's coming in just over 500 pages and honestly a lot of the scenes were unnecessary and not needed. It's definitely a filler book but I think because I love these characters in this story so much like I really enjoyed it so I did give it five out of five stars. My heart absolutely broke at the ending of this book and it definitely has me craving the third book in the series which isn't coming out until 2021 so it has me anticipating it like crazy. The next book is another five out of five read for me. It is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I loved this book. The book follows Lucy Hutton and Josh Templeman who are office rivals at a big publishing company. They have hated each other since the first day they worked together. News of a big promotion comes to light and they are each other's biggest competition. To make matters worse, whoever gets the job ends up being the other one's boss. As time takes down to the final interview, they begin to realize that they might not hate each other as much as they initially thought and it's like the story of that. But like I said, I absolutely loved this book. Five out of five stars. I am so disappointed in myself that it took me this long to read this book because I'm absolutely obsessed with both of these characters. Objectively, the writing is probably not the best, but I just fell in love with this story and these characters. They are so funny. It had me laughing out loud multiple times while reading. Enemies to lovers is like one of my favorite tropes, so these two lovebirds did not disappoint me in any way. I found them to be hilarious. I'm also a big fan of the sexual tension between these two characters. It was thick and I was here for it. I was a big fan of the banter between these two characters. I love how sassy and funny these two were. I think that it was great that they always had a comeback for one another. Honestly, I kind of think that I loved it so much because the way that they bantered back and forth is very similar to the way that my boyfriend and I banter back and forth, so I think it just kind of reminded me of us, which now that I think about it is probably not healthy, but we have a good time, so... Oh well. These two characters are complete opposites from one another. Lucy is like this little ball of sunshine. She's always trying to find the positive in everything while Josh is like the office asshole. But he also has a very soft heart and I loved seeing those moments with Lucy when he let his guard down. I also really liked Lucy's parents. They were just so supportive of her and just they were a great addition to the story. The biggest downfall and the one complaint that I have about the book is the possessiveness that one of the characters showed. I am not a fan of those types of characters so I I was a little disappointed in that story arc. You know, nevertheless, I still loved the book. I flew through it. Five out of five stars. Definitely recommend if you haven't picked it up yet, which you probably have because literally everybody has read this book but me. But now I can say that I have and 
I love it. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part three wrap up is Nowhere But Here by Katie McGarry. I gave this a three out of five stars. It follows 17 year old Emily, who is the daughter of Eli, who is one of the heads of a motorcycle club. When Emily was a baby, Eli walked out on her and her mother. So other than her yearly mandatory visits, she wants nothing to do with him. So when her adoptive father suggests that she stays with her father for the summer, she is not pleased. So when news that Emily might be in danger from a rival gang comes to light. Eli puts a recruit named Oz in charge of protecting Emily for the summer and it's like the story of them falling for one another even though they shouldn't. The book was entertaining while I was reading it but like most of the books in this wrap-up it wasn't anything super memorable. I like how we did get points of views from both Emily and Oz although I was not the biggest fan of Emily. I think that she was very judgmental and annoying for most of the story and I found myself just trying to get back to Oz's point of view. I liked Oz for the most part but I don't think I was his biggest fan either. I did like that he wasn't your typical bad boy in the sense that he was actually very caring and loyal to those that he cared cared about and he wasn't all about trouble. I wasn't the biggest fan of the romance between Emily and Oz. I think that it felt very forced and just way too insta-lovey for my taste. I was a big fan of Eli. I think he was my favorite character other than Olivia in the story. He reminded me of FP from Riverdale and that's honestly all I could picture while I was reading it and I have the biggest crush on Skeet Ulrich so I was here for it. Unfortunately, he wasn't in the story as much as I wish he was. The measures that he goes to to protect Emily are amazing and the things that he does to protect her just blows my mind. She really pissed me off, but it is understandable the way that she acts because she didn't know the whole story and she was never told the whole story, but once the whole story comes to light, I just have a newfound respect for Eli. It honestly annoyed me so much that this entire story could have been so much shorter if they had just, you know, communicated with one another because, like, the whole thing is just a huge miscommunication. I think that the book is very lengthy, like, it's over 500 pages. A lot of it could have been left out and we still could, would have gotten the same story, so I think that is a little big for the story that it's trying to tell. The ending did surprise me though, so I definitely enjoyed that. I didn't see it coming. And then the final thing I want to say about this book is that Olivia is one of my newfound favorite characters. She's Emily's grandmother and she is just so feisty and sassy and I love her with my whole heart. But yeah, overall, it actually was a quick read for being over 500 pages. It flew by very quickly, but nothing memorable, so three out of five stars. All right, everybody, so that was my part three out of four wrap-up. The others will be linked down below if you're interested in checking those out. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!